Sage Wonder here coming at you from my van down by the river. So, in my last video series, How I Did uh, Battle with a Witch, the three part series, uh, a lot of questions began to arise about whether or not witchcraft has actually any power at all. And I think before you can answer that, you have to ask yourself, what, what are witches doing when they cast spells? And I think even the Wiccans who watch my channel would agree with what I'm about to tell you. That they, uh, that, that these incantations and spells are summoning entities. Now, uh, white witches believe the entities that they are contacting are benevolent and uh, good creatures. Um, they don't... I, I don't know that I've actually heard a Wiccan try to describe to me the origin of these entities, who they are, where they come from, uh, what is their origin story. <laughs> um, but they just seem to be forces in the earth. Uh, the uh, Mother Nature character, uh, who is often, uh, you know, they call her Diane or the goddess, the feminine energy, um, and then there is uh, the hunter. He is the male energy. And um, I don't know if they see these individuals as uh, creator gods um, or who they are specifically to them, but these are the entities that they are trying to summon. And this is white witchcraft. When you get into black magic, you get a larger pantheon of characters, of uh, creatures, entities, as it were, gods, maybe with the little g that they are contacting and trying to uh, uh, petition to perform tasks on their behalf. Now, the Christian perspective of this is that these entities that they are reaching out to are lesser gods, or as most evangelical Christians would call them, demons. So this begs the question, are there demons and angels? Can witches summon demons to perform tasks for them or not? Um, I do believe that this is not just possible, but has been practiced down through the ages. But I believe that these entities that are pretending to be good and are connecting with people uh, are actually demons. Now, a lot of people think a demon is a little horned devil with a tail who runs around with a pitchfork poking people who live down in hell, breathe fire and all of this, where... I think uh, the image of demons painted in the C.S. Lewis uh, book, The Screwtape Letters. If you're not familiar with The Screwtape Letters, you should check this book out. There's also audio books of this and also um, uh, plays where this is acted out. And essentially the entire Screwtape's letter is uh, this correspondence between two demons who are discussing the people that they are responsible for distracting, distorting, leading astray, tormenting, and making miserable. And they talk back and forth like the person that they're responsible for is their patient, and they are doctors, and their job is to essentially make this person go crazy and lose their mind. And they look at it very scientifically and very, and very, um, you know, very specifically and logically. Uh, like there's a logic to everything they do. <clears throat> and even though to humans it seems random, it's part of a grand plan. <clears throat> I will say this, that uh, I won't start to venture into the different deities that white witches and even black magic par uh, practitioners engage in. I I'm not going to catalog those. I'm not going to, honestly, I'm not going to honor them even by giving them name. Um... But I do want you to know what I think they are, and I believe that they are fallen angels. If you have seen my video, um, uh, Hellfire, uh, The Clash of the Two Kingdoms, which I think is, that is uh, two, uh, episode two maybe, The Two Kingdoms, um, for my Hellfire series, <clears throat> you'll understand that I believe that, the, that there are supernatural forces, deities as it were. Ancient alien theorists would call them uh, aliens. <laughs> <clears throat> but they are divided, clearly, down the middle. The good guys and the bad guys. Yin and yang. Black and white. Light and dark. 
and how in my Two Kingdoms message, I talk about how everything we do builds one kingdom at the expense of the other. And that throughout the day, we're building one and tearing one down. And I think when you are building your the kingdom of light more than you are tearing it down, more than you are pushing up the kingdom of darkness, then you are a good guy. And if you are promoting the kingdom of darkness and pushing down good uh, to the, uh, on a regular basis, then you're clearly on the dark side. And not unlike Star Wars, there's this division of good versus evil. And that these entities are more clearly um, polarized than humans. That humans tend to be more of a mix, like an un, um, almost like an undecided voter or a swing voter where they can be influenced to the positive or to the negative. But these ancient spirits that have been around, these entities, these aliens, if you were, that have been around for so long are already clearly divided. Like they are polarized. Like they know exactly who they are. They have signed their soul to one side or the other. They are either here to lift up humanity, to make our lives better, to... Uh, to elevate us and bring us up to a higher level of, of consciousness. Or they are tearing us down, enslaving us, draining us of our energy, sucking us dry, as it were, of our positive energy life forces. Now, Christians don't get bent here. I'm using language that the Wiccans, the New Agers, and other people can understand. Even a Buddhist, a Buddhist can understand this as well. And I am not, uh, I'm not trying to teach Orthodox Christianity here. You and I know what we believe. This is language I'm using so that we can all have a communication about angels and demons, about powers of light versus power of dark, good versus evil. And I believe that these uh, these alien entities, these demons and angels, have been divided. And some have an allegiance to the light, and some have an allegiance to the dark. Some want to see humanity salvaged, elevated, uh, influenced to the positive. Uh, they, others want to see us tore down, enslaved. Uh, they see us as food. I really think demons see us as food. And then those that are in the occult that may very well be summoning demons who think they're summoning some kind of holy entity who's who's natural in some way. I think they're being deceived. Don't be offended, witches uh, out there. I'm not trying to start a war with you. I'm just telling you how I feel. I believe through my years, years of study and, and personally engaging with many Wiccans, uh, and I've had long discussions, friendships. I've had friendships with white witches. And I've also done battle with, had, had, had odd relationships and been at odds with people who are in, engaged in everything from necromancy to uh, summoning of demons to, um, uh, you know, what is the definition of witchcraft? The defin of witch, definition of witchcraft is rebellion, according to the Bible. And what does that mean? That means I am taking authority that is not mine and utilizing it. So by engaging with these entities and using the power that they offer you, then you are using power that is not yours and you haven't been authorized to use. And that if you want true power, true light power, true energy power, it has to come first through God the Creator, uh, the, 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 the energy life source of all things good. So when you, and then the Bible teaches us as Christians that Jesus is the pathway, the only pathway. That's why early Christians weren't called Christians. They were called people who walked in the way, that this is the way to get to God is through Christ. And I think he empowers us and gives us that direct connection to God, a conduit as it were. Uh, it, it, it bridges the divide between uh, humanity and uh, the angelic or the, or the heavenly. So... Demons can be summons, which brings us to the second half of my discussion here, which will probably prompt its own video. If people who walk in uh, the occult can summon a demon and get them to do things for them, can Christians who walk in the light, who are in covenant with God, who have reached the throne room through Christ, can we summon angels? Can we command angels? I'm going to do a video about this, and it's going to reference the scripture that says that the angels are given charge, charge over us. And I will prove to you in that video that the word charge doesn't mean they're, they command us. It means they're responsible for our safety. 
if I had, if you brought your kid over to my house and they were going to hang with my kids and I was going to be responsible for them, you would give me charge over those kids. Now, doesn't mean those kids have to do what I say. It doesn't mean they're my kids. It just means that I'm responsible. And if anything happens to them, it's on me. So they need to listen to me because I'm the responsible person. And that angels are given charge over us. Angels are our bodyguards, our guides in this world. Can we as Christians tell angels what to do? If you access them through God via Christ, why not? And I think in a video series, I would like to offer you proof, biblical proof, proof, historical proof, and anecdotal proof that Christians can summon angels to do the bidding and to do things for them if it's in conjunction with God and his wishes and his plan for us. That so many Christians are all about the Holy Spirit and Jesus, but they seem to forget that there's this army. You know, there's a, there's a demonic army that equals one third of all of the angels, the fallen angels, and they're working against humanity 24 seven. <laughs> Don't you think as Christians that we would have the authority to work with the other two thirds of the angels that didn't fall there in concert with, God, with Christ? Angels and demons. If the witch can summon a demon, why can't a Christian summon an angel? That's for a future video. But as far as do witches have power, I believe they do through the demonic. That they access these entities, that they twist their arm, offer them bribes. Um, but really, when you engage with the demonic... There is a bargain. There's a price to be paid. They don't work for you for free. They work for you to own your soul. That they will slowly but surely deteriorate your, your will until they own you. And you are not the one in charge, but they are the ones in charge of you. Think about that if you're dabbling in the occult. All right, till the future video about angels, uh, then we'll see you next time for that video. Make sure and stay tuned to this channel. If you would like to have a personal conversation with me, and I do my best to answer all emails, especially if there's questions involved, you can now reach me via email at sagewandererNation at gmail.com. SageWandererNation at gmail.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time. God bless all.